In this video, I'm gonna be showing you a simplified setup for using the Rodecaster Pro 2 with Zoom and Ecamm Live. Now, I have made uh, previous videos, uh, some of them before the more recent firmware update where we now do have this mix minus on all channels and also the uh, audio routing table as well. Um, but then uh, also some of the things that I was doing before, you know, I was maybe taking it a little bit too far for what people, most people might be using. So I'd set up my Discord back channel to bring people on for my uh, backstage past members of my uh, YouTube channel. Whilst I'm live streaming, I then bought system audio in through one of the jacks at the back and, you know, all very useful stuff. And I found that uh, it's something that I had a need for, but perhaps uh, most other people might not need to do something uh, quite as extreme as that. So I did just want to give you a really sort of more simplified version of it and really cut to the uh, the core concepts that you need to think about. And uh, so if you take nothing else away from this video and if you stop in about a minute's time, uh, just remember this, that if you have got a... Uh, application that has two-way audio going in and out of the Rodecaster. So for example, a Zoom call, you want to be able to talk into the Zoom call and you want to be able to hear the people on the Zoom call talking back. Uh, and with Ecamm Live, you've got uh, your audio obviously going into Ecamm, but then you may have sound effects or people coming in on interview mode. Uh, and so there's audio coming out of Ecamm Live. Uh, for every one of those instances, ideally, if they're going to be running at the same time, you want to give them their own dedicated channel and make sure that Mix Minus is on. Because if you don't have Mix Minus on, then the people in Zoom talking, it will come into the Rodecaster, it will go straight back into the call again, uh, and they will hear themselves uh, repeated back. So just make sure that every instance that you're using has its own dedicated channel. So if you're using Ecamm Live with Zoom, then I'd recommend putting Ecamm Live onto one of the channels and Zoom onto one of the other channels. You could also split out system audio as well. So because we do have three channels available to us on the Rodecaster Pro 2 by plugging in two USB cables, um, that's the uh, setup that I'm going to be talking about today. So we've got both of the USB cables plugged in. That gives us three channels. One is main, one is chat, one of them is secondary. So we can then assign those uh, to those three different things. One for system audio, one for Ecamm and one for Zoom. For this particular use case, it really doesn't matter which one you assign to each because now we do have this uh, full uh, mix minus options and the routing table available for every one of these channels. So really, uh, just take your pick. I mean, they could rename these really just uh, one, two, and three because uh, what you use for chat might not be for chat, it might be for something else. So the naming of them is uh, totally arbitrary at this point uh, and you just uh, decide which you want to assign to which. So with that said, let's just have a quick look at this basic setup that I've got now. Here is my microphone on this channel. Uh, then here I've got, uh, I, I just happen to have used main and I've assigned that to Ecamm, hence the orange, hence the orange light there. Uh, this one is the chat channel, which is for system, uh, go figure, but it is anyway what I've used uh, and I've given that a green color. Uh, the next one is zoom and that is on the secondary channel uh, and that I've given a blue light there. So hopefully the color coding should help make this a little bit uh, simpler to uh, follow along with. So we've got uh, three channels and four including the microphone, uh, one for Zoom, one for Ecamm and one for uh, uh, System. One thing to note though, is that when I'm talking about a channel for a particular use case, you need to make sure it is both the input and the output. So you don't wanna be mixing inputs and outputs. If Zoom is on the secondary channel, you wouldn't wanna have uh, Zoom secondary for the, the uh, Rodecaster Pro 2 secondary for the input, but then use the main for the output uh, because you're completely bypassing then the functionality that we've got with the mix minus. So make sure that uh, it's the dedicated channel, what I mean by that is the speaker and the microphone in Zoom is set to Rodecaster Pro 2 secondary in this case. In Ecamm, both the speaker in the settings, so if we come into the Ecamm settings, uh, come into the audio, uh, select the, in this case, Rodecaster Pro 2 main. Uh, also, you can come and click on this one, map input channels one and two to left and right stereo, since we do have uh, left and right stereo coming out, so we can just toggle that one on. Uh, and then also in the uh, in the microphone input for Ecamm Live, uh, we would also there set that same channel. Uh, and then in your system audio settings, just set your microphone and your system uh, speakers to be, in this case, the chat channel. So that is how we've actually mapped these things in our, in our computer. The next thing we want to do, though, is just check on the settings that we've got within the Rodecaster itself for these three channels. So what we're going to do is come up to the settings... Uh, and then we're going to go over to the uh, outputs. And then we want to click on routing. 
It's called outputs, by the way, but it kind of is inputs as well, if you think about it. So <laughs> it's kind of what's coming in and what's going out. Uh, but anyway, so this is controlling what is going out over these specific channels. Uh, so it's the uh, Rocaster Pro 2 main is the first one here. Uh, now, all we need to do is make sure we've got mix minus set on for that one. Uh, then we go to the uh, chat. Now, this one happens to be um, for the system. So technically, uh, you really don't necessarily need to have uh, mix minus on for that because if you're only getting audio out from the system uh, then it would be okay to leave it as just the you know the, the main mix however if ever you do have any other applications that may be default you know another communication app and it just defaults to system audio maybe you uh, still occasionally use skype or something and it just defaults to system audio uh, then you would still want to have that mix minus on so i would just turn that one on as well uh, and then we come over to the Zoom channel, uh, and this is again a two-way communication. So we want the mix minus switched on. So at the very basic, if you do that, uh, then we've got three channels, mix minus switched on on all of them, a separate channel for each of those use cases, and you'll be good to go. Uh, however, there is then this option of this routing table. So I did just wanna to touch on that and where you may want to use that as well. If you are recording in Ecamm Live at the same time that you're on your Zoom calls, uh, so maybe you are uh, streaming to YouTube, but then you're running your Zoom at the same time, or maybe you just record the presentations that you're giving in Zoom, uh, and you've got the, uh, you know, the people in Zoom that are watching at the same time as you're recording. The way that this is set up at the moment is uh, Ecamm Live will not hear itself back. You won't get any slap back. You won't get any slap back into Zoom either. Uh, however, everything that is said in Zoom will be coming over into the Ecamm Live input as well. So that would just that would come in basically over your microphone feed. It would be picked up from there because it is taking its input from the Rocaster Pro 2. So if you never wanted the audio from Zoom to be kind of bleeding into the Ecamm Live uh, production, so if you were recording the Zoom call and you didn't want to pick up any audio that was going on in there, you could actually exclude the Zoom uh, from the Ecamm Live. So it would mean that they would still be able to hear everything that's going on from Ecamm. You would still be able to hear in your ears everything that was going on from the Zoom call as well, and you'd be able to talk with them. There'd be no difference there. Um, it would just stop any audio from, e from Zoom uh, to be going into the feed from Ecamm. So what you would want to do there is you would then come into the custom for the USB main in this case, because that's what I've got as Ecamm. Uh, and what we want to do is we just want to exclude the Zoom audio, which is the secondary. We want to exclude that from what's going into Ecamm. Now, this routing table, basically, the way that it looks here, this is simulating exactly what Mix Minus is. Each one of these things here is one of the audio feeds, one of the audio channels. Uh, and we're just now deciding, well, which one do we want to actually go back into Ecamm? And this is simulating mix minus at the moment because you can see that basically every channel is going into the, uh, the main channel, except the main channel itself is not feeding back. And that's why this one has a little cross next to it. So if we wanted to exclude the zoom from here, um, it's just a case of clicking on this one, which is, or tapping, <laughs> the, uh, the USB 2 secondary at the... Uh, Rocaster Pro 2 secondary channel. So now everything is going into Ecamm except uh, the stuff that's coming out from Ecamm. So there's no slapback, but also we are excluding the Zoom from there. And as I say, this doesn't affect the people in Zoom and it doesn't affect what you're hearing and it doesn't affect any other channels that this might be routed to. This is just exclusively we're controlling what is going into Ecamm. That's an example of where you may want to use the, uh, the routing table there. However, if you thought that at some point you may actually want to have the audio from the people in Zoom coming into Ecamm, for example, you might well be doing a live stream, but you want to have the chat going on in the background in Zoom or people to be able to ask questions, and you may want to bring the people up to ask questions. If that's the case, I actually don't recommend using this routing. I'd recommend just going back to regular mix minus uh, and coming out of here. But what you can do is you can still prevent the audio from Zoom coming into Ecamm Live. And the way that you do that is here we've got our four faders. This is setting uh, the, uh, the levels for my microphone, for Ecamm, for system and for Zoom. Now, if we want to exclude Zoom from the broadcast, so it's not actually feeding back into uh, what's going out, uh, which includes going out to Ecamm, we can actually just press the mute button here. So there is a mute button. So if we press the mute button, 
um, then that will not be feeding into the, uh, into the mix. Uh, the other option, of course, is we could actually just bring the fader down. Uh, and then again, the fader is set to zero. So the audio from Zoom would not be coming through into Ecamm. If you do that, though, you would not be able to hear it yourself because as the sort of host plugged into the microphone socket one, you can hear everything uh, that's going on. And so since you've moved the volume down here, um, whilst you are doing that, you would not be able to hear anything that was going on in Zoom. So what you can do, though, is we can mute the Zoom in here, um, but then we just use this listen button here. And what that means is you are then going to start listening to uh, that particular channel. Now, when you press that, though, you are then only listening to that channel. So at the moment, right now, um, what's happening is if I got a Zoom call going and there were people talking, uh, you wouldn't be able to hear it because it wouldn't be going into the Ecamm mix because it's muted. Uh, but I can hear what's going on in the call. However, I can't hear anything else that's going on. So if I had interviewees on Ecamm, I wouldn't be able to hear them. I can't actually hear my mic coming back to, uh, uh, to monitor my own mic as well. Uh, I can only hear the channel that I've got the listen button switched on. Fortunately, you can actually listen to multiple channels. So all I'm doing is I'm just going to press listen on all of them. And now what's happening is I can hear absolutely everything that's going on uh, exactly as the levels are set here. Um, I can even hear the Zoom call, um, but because the mute button is pressed down here, it means that it's not actually going into the mix. Uh, and in fact, if you have a look at these buttons up at the top here, uh, you can see that I've got listen on all of these ones, uh, but this one is muted. Uh, but it's actually muted and I can also listen to it. So that's what these three uh, lighting situations are just down here. So the green ones, uh, I'm listening to them, but they're also going out into the mix. Uh, this red one here with Zoom is not going out into the mix. There is another little trick that you can do, though, uh, once you are in this particular state. Let's say, for example, I was uh, rolling a video or something like that, or there was an interviewee that was on the Zoom, on the, the Ecamm call, call, so they were coming in over Ecamm, uh, and maybe they were giving like a full screen presentation, so I'd got a scene set up that just spotlights the guests that I've got in Ecamm Live uh, in interview mode, and they are on, you know, sort of full screen. Uh, whilst I'm not on screen, I might want to be able to just say something to the people in Zoom. Well, you can actually then just, if I press the... Uh, the mute and the listen button on my own track, my uh, the uh, track number one, which is my microphone, and this is coming through my headphones, headphone socket number one as well. If I press the mute and listen button on there, it gives me a back channel into every other channel that has got the mute and listen button on. And what you'll notice is, as soon as I press mute on here, uh, these two will then go yellow. So with those yellow, what that means is I can then talk into the Zoom call. So if I had got a guest on giving a presentation and I wanted to say to the people in Zoom, get ready with your questions. We'll be wrapping up in five minutes and ready to take questions. I could literally, whilst the, the main presenter uh, was on screen, I could just uh, press this button uh, and say that into the back channel, into the Zoom call. <laughs> So you wouldn't have heard that, uh, and then we are good to go. Um, so that is the way that I would set this up for Ecamm, uh, System Audio, and Zoom. Uh, and of course, if you actually don't want to hear what's going on in Zoom or it's getting too rowdy, you can always just turn that down. Uh, this fader in this situation, it's muted for the, uh, for the, uh, the, the main mix, uh, but you still have control over its volume. Uh, and because you've got these listen buttons pressed here, uh, then you can uh, hear everything that's going on. So once again, the main thing to think though is just make sure you have got a dedicated channel for these applications that require two-way audio and make sure that you don't sort of mix channels. So you don't want secondary on input and main on output or something like that for any one of them. Keep them separate and you should not have uh, any problems with it. So I hope that that is a little bit more simplified and I hope that it helps you uh, figure out how to get this best setup for you. Uh, now I will leave a link to uh, my other Rodecaster Pro 2 videos uh, over on the right hand side and I'll see you in there.